OK, so now for something completely different. Uh, we're going to talk about synchronized collections, which will be a gateway to our discussion in our next class together on concurrent collections. So I'll briefly describe what is a synchronized collection and show you some examples. So by default, out of the box, especially the legacy Java collections, they're not synchronized by and large. Uh, so for example, if you try to use array list with multiple threads, then chaos and insanity will ensue. And in, it actually tells you this. If you go read the documentation, it says, this implementation is not synchronized. If multiple threads access an array list instance concurrently, and at least one of the threads modifies the list structurally, like makes it grow, it must be synchronized externally by using a synchronized statement or a synchronized method or a reentrant lock or something. But it's not done internally. And uh, therefore, this would not be thread safe. So it's only thread safe if you can manipulate the internal shared data structures, the mutable shared data, in a way that avoids race conditions when multiple threads read and write to it at the same time. So there's a variety of ways to solve this problem. The simplest way, though not necessarily the best way, is to use something called synchronized collection wrappers. And the collection class has a bunch of factory methods that take a non-thread safe collection, like an array list or a linked list, and they'll wrap it in a synchronized collection or a synchronized list or a synchronized map or a synchronized set. So these are the factory methods that do that. And what these do is that they ensure that the result that comes back is, in fact, thread safe. So let's take a look at a simple example. It's, it's really, it's really kind of clever. Not necessarily the best thing to do, but it's very clever. So let's say we make ourselves a hash map. And uh, we want to make it accessed in multiple threads. We have thread T1, T2, T3, T4, and so on. And so some threads are going to put stuff, some things are going to get. And we'd like to make sure that no matter what order these threads run in, that sensible things occur. Um, if we were to just say, you know, new hash map and then do this kind of stuff in multiple threads, there's no guarantee what would happen because of all the atomicity issues of visibility and atomicity and, and ordering and so on. So instead, what we do is we take our map and we wrap it with a synchronized map. And ironically, it comes back as the same type. It's just synchronized now. And then these calls will not have problems. Now, this is what it looks like, for example, if we do synchronized map. If you call synchronized map for a non-synchronized map, it'll create a new instance of synchronized map. And I'll show you what synchronized map looks like in a second that basically holds this thing as a field and returns a new wrapper to encapsulate it. So it just wraps the map parameter by a synchronized map and returns map. However, these things are not optimized for concurrent access. And when you take a look at the implementation, you'll see why. The reason that they're not going to be optimized for concurrent access is because they create an internal object called mutex. And as you can see, what happens here is the constructor will assign this to mutex. And then whenever you call get or anything else on the map, get, put, and so on, it wraps the underlying get method call on the non-synchronized object with a synchronized statement. So we have a synchronized statement here that wraps this thing. And this is basically a, the gang of four decorator pattern. So if you remember 251, if you took 251 here, this is the decorator pattern. The problem, however, is there's only a single lock, namely this guy. And so as a result, if lots of threads come descending on this thing in you know, thundering herd-like fashion, you'll end up with lots of contention for that single lock. And so that turns out to be very inefficient. It works, but it's very inefficient. So obviously, this is unsatisfying, right? Having, having something that works is better than having something that's not thread safe sometimes. Uh, it's, it's better to have something that's slow but correct than fast and wrong, usually. Um, but it's not the best we can do. So we won't cover this at the moment, but when we start up next time, I will talk about concurrent collections 
which end up being much more clever about locking, and they actually have multiple locks so that, in the case of a hash map, if you have multiple threads adding or putting and getting things into the map, and the hash functions distribute them nicely across the hash table, you actually can have everything, many things running in parallel, so they don't have contention for a single lock. So that, that's kind of getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but that's where we're headed for this.